they doing some charity work per usual. Gracious man, he is. Um, I didn't even. Oh, everything. I didn't even read the tweet. Um, I didn't even read the tweet. I saw Woj and then Darvin. I knew what it was, so I launched the space. So you know, props to me. Good timing on me. First, first to it. You feel me? Uh, Darvin Ham is gone. Darvin Ham is fired. He went 90 and 74. Honestly, I didn't expect that good of a record, but that's kind of above 500. Uh, it's over. It is over to all Laker fans. The Darvin Ham experience and the experiment is over. To a lesser degree, this feels like the Westbrook era kind of ending. Um, but this is a much, this is good for our organization nonetheless. No matter how you feel about the team, which players, uh, which GM, the coach is gone. We are now starting over. I personally didn't think the GM would have the balls to do this um, a few months back, but how everything played out, this seemed like the likely option. Um, you know, because I thought we, I think, I think a lot of us up here, or Laker fans, I'll speak on Laker fans, were under the impression that the 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 front office and the GM wanted to save face. They could not continue to uh, fire and recycle coaches, which is why it happened. Um, back in, I think, January, February. Uh, they had to kind of be stubborn and stand on this decision that they went with, especially with the four-year contract that we learned and found out uh, a previous summer ago. Um, but all the events that transpired, the urgency that has come along, we don't even know. I, we know exit interviews were conducted uh, publicly. We don't know if any behind-the-scenes conversations were, were done, but we do know how the players felt. And this was the decision that was reached uh, I don't know what day we got eliminated, but in a span of 96 hours, our head coach is yeah, gone. And, um, so, also, uh, uh, Shams, Shams also added some names that were possible candidates as well. I don't know if you saw his message. Go ahead. As, no, well, yeah, he, he said... Yeah. Um, is that J.J. Reddick? Yeah, he said an extensive search will oh, commence yeah. soon with candidates such as Mike Budenholzer, Jesus Christ, Kenny Atkinson, and J.J. Reddick. So, if he becomes yeah, available. If he becomes available. Cool. Yeah, thank you. Um, but this is a great day. I think nonetheless, we should celebrate, um, a step in the right direction. Obviously, I mean, everyone, uh, neutral, neutral speaking, we talk about Darvin every day, but like someone lost a job. Darvin Ham, the coach, do I think he should be a head coach again in the NBA? Probably not. I do think, uh, elite assistant or something like that is probably best for his future. Um, I, something I did like about Darvin Ham, our guys fought, bro. Like, I did not see that in previous seasons. Some of our, our guys really fought in games they shouldn't have been in. Uh, that's what I remember most about Darvin. Uh, but everything else, I mean, everyone's going to take the negativity uh, away. But that's what I remember most about Darvin. Uh, it was cool for about a year, and then I was over the experience. But time to get an experienced head coach. In. Coach that is, you know, prone to win uh, in these final years of LeBron. This tells me the front office is serious about LeBron James in his final year. This also tells me they're confident in retaining LeBron James, who's a, who's a potential free agent as well, uh, that this is a step in the right direction. Hopefully, who they hire with some championship-level experience will show me the validity of how serious they are to making a crazy run next year and, and, and uh, catapulting the Lakers into con uh, contending status. Um, I'm going to go to I'm gonna go to James. James, take it away. Your thought. I know, I know we, we all knew this was kind of coming. Um. Yeah, my mic. Uh, it's your working. internet, man. Yeah, your mic. Uh, your mic kind of um, going a little out of work. But um, is my mic working? Can y'all hear me correctly? Yeah. yeah, yeah mic um, to the news, like, <laughs> bro, <don't> listen, <laughs> brother, uh, get your kids gang. But uh, nah, to the news. <laughs> the, um, I thought, like, even when they announced that Darwin would be fired, I'm like. Brother, what's taking so long? Uh, it's been a few days, but now uh, I'm glad it. Um, obviously, we're all happy it happened. And I'll be honest, bro. When he first got announced as our coach, I had a high hopes, bro. Like I was one of the guys who actually said we should hire Darvin because I was looking at how Ime Udoka um had success, bro. He was an assistant for a long time. He got his chance as a coach. I was thinking maybe Darvin Ham could be the next uh Udoka for us, and he just. The nigga was not good, bro. Like, and we saw it instantly. Like, people think when you criticize Darvin, you're trying to place all of the team's blames on him. No, like, some of the shit is on players as well. But for Barkley specifically to go on TV saying Darvin is a hell of a coach, and the reason they're losing is because the players just suck. 
Well, part of the reason is the players suck, but my nigga, the nigga was fucking awful. Like, I mean, I could go into detail about all the bullshit he did for two for two years, but I don't know, bro. It's just that's obviously gonna come later in the space, but the biggest news is this nigga's gone, bro. I'm not even gonna try and be nice about this shit. I wanted this nigga gone immediately last year when we went to the Western Conference Finals. So this ain't some first round shit. I thought he was trash last year. The nigga's garbage. He's not a good coach. So, I don't know, bro. <laughs> How many ways can I say a nigga is trash? So, obviously, we'll hear it in his face. But the nigga was not good. Uh, these To these names that were announced, obviously, the one that I'm probably leaning towards is Kenny Atkinson. Because that's a name that we suggested long, like months ago, like as a possible guy you could go after. He's on a Warriors bench right now, obviously. But... Mike Budenholzer, brother, who do you think Todd Darwin? Like, the nigga was an assistant under Mike Budenholzer for, like, six, seven years. So, I don't know if that's the direction you're going in. Mike Budenholzer is a regular season warrior, though. His regular season teams, they have a lot of success. But we've seen that nigga do bullshit in the playoffs also. So, I already know what Mike Budenholzer is going to be on. So, obviously, we can get into further detail about who they're going to accept. J.J. Redick. I don't know, bro. I don't even know how to speak on that shit. Another rookie head coach who doesn't really have experience, but he obviously knows the game. It's just you, those kind of – I don't know if that's a decision you – I don't know. I don't know about the J.J. Redding point. Obviously, I don't think this um, fan base wants another rookie head coach who we know nothing about. But you, you said something interesting, Trev. You said championship experience. I mean, Buddha Jose has that, but, but that nigga – it kind of trash. Um, so it's kind of interesting. You got to be – I don't know if there's a lot of coaches out here with that. Like, the culture market is kind of dry. Niggas are saying Terry Stotts. Some niggas saying Mark Jackson. So there's a lot of ass names out here. But I think Kenny Atkinson is probably the first name on my list currently of the guys available. We don't. But I will say, depending on how this series goes, you know who I'm talking about. You know, maybe he could become available – I think that's the name guys are looking at. But we'll wait to see how that series plays out. But uh, if Ty Lue became available, you know, that's, a, that's another name as yeah. well. So we'll see. Yeah, I, I'm I'm shocked that Shams didn't have the drop on Ty Lue, especially with their season on the line tonight. Um, I would still uh, – the Lakers' official account even announced it immediately too. That's kind of crazy. Um, yeah, I, I'm kind of shocked that Ty Lue wasn't even at least in, in this semi-hit piece – of names uh because his he's been floating around anyways so um yeah, yeah. the media doesn't care about any team or you know their ventures so i'm confused why shams or any reporter didn't put ty Lue, uh ty Lue's name before yeah, tonight's Ma- game Ma- oh, oh, it, now i was gonna go say Molly guess it's probably because he's still employed by the clippers it's kind of tough speaking on a nigga that's it yeah well they didn't give well, a fuck when, when it, yeah true so i guess that was my only guess on it but they don't they, Shams didn't give a fuck when Vogel was in Denver coaching his last game, uh, and Austin Reed loves to uh, come back and he was announced as firing too. So I'm no, just no, I meant like, why, why Lue, like coaching game. still in the playoffs. It's kind of tough to list his name as a candidate when he's still kind of coaching. Play. I don't know. I That's guess. my only guess at it, but I could be wrong. If their season, if their season ends, I will be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a uh, another tweet coming out. Uh, Ty Lue's future in the balance with the he Clippers. He wouldn't yada, get yada, fired, yada. by the um, way, in that scenario. People are saying, like, oh, yeah, the Clippers need to fire Ty Lue. I think that would be a situation where, like, they'd have to mutually agree to part ways. Yeah. And he stepping. That's what's fine. It wouldn't be, like, a firing. Because he actually still has a year on his contract, too. So, it's like... It's kind of was like, yeah. Why would they? Why would they fire him if they know he's coming over here too? You might want to try to get a pick or something. Yeah, it's a but mutual kind of thing. Um, Zay, Zay's. Yeah, uh, I can't Zay's give a real take right now, but uh, I'll put it on the. God, yeah, Zay's, Zay's busy at a charity event. I'm a. I'm gonna pass the mic to Rome. Uh, Rome hasn't said a word yet, so uh, Rome. Oh, you know, I ain't gonna say shit. Oh no. Oh. Uh, <laughs> it's me. Bro. Listen, bro. Um. Yeah, I mean, I know people are like, well, why well, it took so long? Um, I, I heard a lot of smoke about, I guess, the Lakers trying to, like, kind of overcorrect what they did with Vogel. Because, y'all know, Vogel got fired before the damn buzzer went off. Uh, I think that Woj tweet came out literally before the press conference even hit. So, 
I think um, – and, and that wasn't really perceived well around the league. I remember Quinn Snyder being super pissed about it. And like a lot of a lot of coaches were really mad about it. So I think uh, the Lakers wanted to make sure it, it at least looked the part, right? Like to take a few days to wait until, you know, Friday. Now what it does, it gives Rob Palenka time to address the media and over the weekend we can kind of just see what's going on. Right. So, um, and talk about it and mull over it. So I think it was a lot more calculated. Obviously he was always going to get fired. Um, and this is what I told niggas, man, I'm not even trying to do the I told you so shit, but I genuinely remember telling people, bro, if we don't go far in the playoffs, there is no fucking way this dude remains the coach and LeBron James contract here. It just isn't possible, bro. You got a guy like D'Angelo Russell who is probably either opting out, going somewhere else, or, you know, if he opts in, he's not going to stay on the team. You got LeBron James who literally is like, bro, either figure this shit out now or, like, I don't want to play anymore. And so it's it's like one of those situations where, like, you kind of have to figure it out. This is like red button time, right? Like, this is red button uh, for the Lakers organization. And so I think a lot of fans were just so – afraid because Darvin didn't get fired during the middle of the season. He didn't get fired, you know, at times last year when we all hated seeing what he was doing. And I think people actually believe, yo, like no matter what, he's going to stay. Like we made the playoffs, he's going to stay. And it's like, in reality, the only chance of him maybe having a chance to stay would have probably been if we made the Western Conference Finals and lost to Denver again. That probably would have been the only real way that he fucking stayed. So for all the people that were so we should have tanked and played OKC. You probably would have just gave Darvin Ham a lifeline. And if you really and, and, and that's one of the things throughout all the spaces we've had, like the coaches in spaces, we've even had people come up and tell us like, bro, you guys don't get at the coach enough. And it's like, because we kind of already knew what it was. Like at, at some point, you gotta you gotta you gotta focus on other things when it's pretty evident the front office isn't gonna do anything about Darvin Ham, right? Like and so now that he's fired, right, now that he's actually gone, I think it's kind of just like a weight lifted off the shoulders of, like, just the fan base. Because we all were saying, bro, you probably aren't going to go anywhere with this coach. Like, that was probably, like, one thing. If, if, if this fan base didn't agree on one thing, I think we all agreed on the fact that Darvin Ham wasn't good enough for the job, right? And so I think that, like, with that part of it, um, everybody should be happy, bro. Everybody should rejoice, bro. Like... And to me, and I know I know you guys talked about it really briefly, but like, dog, the fact that Ty Lu's name is even being mentioned, that has to matter. The dude is literally employed, first of all. Like he's employed as a coach. Like, think about that for a second. He's a coach right now. And the fact that like you got Shams, I just seen a Yovan tweet. His article. <laughs> I'm looking at his, I'm looking at I'm looking at Yovan's article right now. Tyron Lu and and LeBron James really dapping up in the fucking. I'm gonna send it in the jumbotron, but like, okay, that's not that's not coming from nowhere, right? Like, I don't think that's coming from nowhere. I don't think that's a situation where it's like, if there legit was no chance, a, a guy <laughs> like Ty Lu, I don't know if he'd even his name would even be mentioned at this this early on in the stage because obviously it's just gonna take a while. Obviously it's gonna take weeks, right, to really you know conduct the interviews figure out who they want, go through all that, all the, you know, all that shit. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it's cool. Uh, I think he probably should have been fired way earlier in the season. I thought he probably should have been fired after December, if we're being totally honest. And, and niggas don't want to talk about it because everybody was sitting here saying, well, like, who are we going to hire? Bro, it doesn't fucking matter. When you lose a locker room, you don't get it back. You don't get it back. So I thought he bought, he actually, it took too long to fire him. And I think that actually kind of contributed to our season. Hey, I got a question for uh, you and Shub too. Are y'all shocked? Yo. Are y'all shocked that I didn't see Phil's handy Phil Handy's name in our report? No, a little. I don't yeah, know, I'm bro. Not, he's, li- he's linked. I don't know to be possible coach. I don't know. Ah, a little bit. He, but we know he survived he was... two coaching like uh, rounds, right? Like he survived two of them, and he's really only here off of the strength of LeBron James. If we're being totally honest, I don't. I don't and, know. I th- and I think Aaron Pink, a- is, Aaron Pink has dropped a uh, kind of an article saying if they were to hire J- if they were to hire JJ Redick, they'd hire like a lot of experienced guys next to him as experience, assistants, uh, yeah, and they listed Terry yeah. spots. So we'll see. 
Um, uh, the reason I'm surprised is because you know, like how Genie and Rob sort of operate. Like they only go to like their connections in a sense. So in terms of who they trust. So if Genie trusts LeBron, that and LeBron trusts Phil, then that means Genie trusts Phil, and that's gonna be the extent of her knowledge. So the fact that you know she like Phil's not really mentioned, they're kind of going serious and you know nba wide kind of resources with all these names that mean that tells me that they're serious which is a good indictment on the front you, you office gotta, which has been a lot you gotta think about it james when uh if it's during the season we 100 percent would have had phil right like that would have been like all right phil will probably be the interim, interim, uh, now. In, interim yeah but yeah. but like when you when you fire a coach at the end of the season there's no there's no interim situation so like they don't even really have to mention phil handy and i don't even know if phil handy like is legitimately like a a head coach level of a of a option, right? At least for the Lakers, right? Like, because again, you know, like he'd be a rookie head coach. I know he has the experience. He's been with LeBron. We said the same shit about Darvin Ham. <laughs> like, been assistant coach for ten years. Did all these? It's like, bro. At this point, I think you either got to go completely proven championship option, which is sadly why Budenholzer's name is there. Hopefully, it doesn't stay. But um, yeah, I think it's I, to me personally, bro. I was talking to Raj about this. I think it's Tyler or Bus, bro. I, I really do. I don't. I, I was just I gonna say Tyler that. I was. I don't exact, really think I was gonna say the exact any same of thing. these options. The only one that I actually like would love still would probably be Kenny Atkinson. Like I actually really like Kenny, um, and that's Steve Kerr's lead assistant. And like I know Warrior fans want to shit on the Steve Kerr and his coaching staff. He's consistently had one of the best coaching staffs like in the league. So I listen, bro. It's the reason why Mike Brown left and got coach of the year, right? Like, I have actually, like, the utmost faith in that coaching tree as opposed to any of the other coaching trees around the league if you can't get a guy like Ty Lue. Obviously, Ty Lue, I want Ty Lue for LeBron James. I want Ty Lue for whatever trades we're going to make. I want Ty Lue for Anthony Davis. I want Ty Lue for the future post Braun. Like, that's a franchise coach, right? Like, that's the coach I would love to have. I saw that guy – take the fucking Clippers with no Kawhi and Paul George to the fucking play and, like, had no business being in that yeah. situation. Like, I, I utmost respect for Ty. Um, and then the last thing I'll say... You saying David Adelman. Okay. Yeah, nah. I'm, I'm, I, and, 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 like, obviously, there's a reason no why, right? Like, there's a reason why they're saying it, right? Like, it, it has to do with just so? his aptitude as an offensive mind and, and you know, that, that, that new wave of, like, Intellectual, you Kevin Young, analytical based coaches family. like the Will Hardys, like the Mark Dagnalls, like those. Type. He he fits that mold, but again, I don't think that's what LeBron and AD and those guys truly are going to thrive under. Um, like Kevin Young, you know those types. But um, I'll just say this though, just to wrap it up because I'm talking too long. Um, Wojn- well, A- Adrian Wojnarowski, bro. Um, one of the things that he said that I don't think you guys spoke on was the fact that, like, now whoever inherits the Lakers, like, team as a coach gets to, like, benefit off the fact that we got assets to trade. And that has to matter too, right? Because he's essentially saying whoever this coach is going to be is kind of getting a fresh start. It's not going to be with this core, likely. It's not going to be, you know, with what we had the last two seasons. Because we got shit to play with. And if you got assets to use, I think this is, again, when I said red button, all bets are off with this, all this whole who's staying, who's going. Like, I think we're in mayday mode and it's, hey, priority number one, get rid of this coach. Priority number two, make sure LeBron comes back. Priority number three, build around your two guys. I think that's where we're at. And, yeah, so I mean that was an interesting little little uh, caveat for me to see Woj say like, oh yeah, this new coach is gonna benefit off the assets that the Lakers now have. It's like, damn, bro, that kind of means like some of these niggas are out. So we'll see what happens, bro. Yeah, and yeah. if you, if you remember, Darvin uh, was hired before we got like guys like Pat Bev and you know what you know what he was trying to get to hit, fit his mold. So we're gonna see the same thing again with this. Uh, I'm gonna up a good point. Oh my fault. I'm gonna do it wrong, Go but ahead. it can't be. Boot holes or, or JJ, it just can't. There's no way. Please, can't. no JJ. I agree. Both of those are gonna end Tyler terrible, I, especially JJ, JJ. Bro, having a first year, that I can already see how bad that's gonna end. Like, no, bro. we just did it. Terrible, like, bro. And, no. and it, 
We just did it. And there's going to be no accountability because LeBron, 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 LeBron LeBron being friends with our head coach does not have any merit to anyone else on the roster. So I'm with that too. I think it's Tyler Robust, like Rome said, to be honest. And then you can look at other options if it really comes to that, if the Clippers somehow, somewhere uh, go really far or whatever. Um, <laughs> Uh, Rome said a good point too about the press conference. Uh, we'll see if Rob actually addresses the media uh, sometime this weekend. Him doing it on a Friday as well. And one more wrinkle I'll speculate on um, before I throw it to speakers. Uh, throw the mic to speakers is um, <laughs> Kenny Atkinson, who had his uh, his lone All Star replacement season under Kenny Atkinson in Brooklyn. That would be one d'angelo russell i'll leave that people to think on um we're gonna go to speakers i'll go to uh, jordan uh i'm gonna go to jordan uh jordan uh bro we've been calling for this for close to a year more than a year how are you feeling uh, this Friday? um i'm in the process of making dinner it's on it's on jordan like i said i would um, when this news dropped I'm, i'm making dinner reservations right now i was not bluffing um i was in the i'm in the coffee shop doing some editing some video shit Saw the news. I can't hear it. Um, yeah, I got you. A nigga screamed. The nigga was me. Um, dude sitting next to me asked, like, what, what's, what, what happened? What's going on? I said, uh, my team fired my coach. He said, what team? He said, the Lakers. He said, oh, fuck yeah. And he dapped me up. This, everybody knows how trash this nigga is. It has been. I don't even think that dude was a basketball fan. He knows. <laughs> he watch basketball. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't even think he watches basketball. He was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> that me up. Oh hell! Nigga watch hot. No, that like true story, bro. Like I, he was on his way out. Like, um, I truly believe and have always believed in my heart of hearts. Like he would have been fired if they would have got blasted in that first that Clippers game that they won at home. Um, I think that was in January, in the midst of like the Grizzlies losses and the Heat losses. I fully believe he would have gotten fired. Then just the vibes of the team and how they were losing games were. It was that bad, and they were down in the first half. Plus, you know how, you know, reactionary the organization is as far as like, oh, we losing to our crosstown rivals, getting blown out at home, and we being in the midst of already a down stretch. So I think he would have been fired then, but they won that game, and that set the clock back. I think all the way to the rest of the season because it started playing better from the second half of that game on. The offense started looking better, and you know, it was what it was. But you know, when you suck as a coach, um, you can only stave it off. For, for so long, and we saw, in the, especially in the Yovan article, um, things started to creep back up even after that, that they had a problem with primarily the smaller rotations um, going into the playoffs, not picking one of Dinwiddie and Gabe and shit like that. So when you're bad, you can only stave it off for so long, bro. It's just going to – you're going to – it's going to be bad um, in other ways down the line. So I wasn't the guy who was also in favor of the hire, too, when it happened. I quickly, like within a couple of months, um, retracted. (laughs) Because it wasn't just the losing, it was the manner in which you're losing. And sometimes you can kind of just see it when guys have it and when they don't. Um, You know, some guys you can see, okay, he just needs time, um, bring him along. This wasn't that situation. I think you saw pretty quickly that – he just didn't have it, bro. Bro, he yeah. started Pat Bev at small forward. That's when I knew, like, oh, yeah, this is a fucking idiot. I knew but. it was cooked on Christmas Day against Dallas when he put five guards in the court. Literally. Like, like regardless of, oh, who are you going to play, Troy Brown? Nigga, yes. <laughs> like, I'm going to play somebody bigger instead of playing five guards because as trash as that guy is or those guys are who might be bigger on your bench, at least you know that, you know, they can – have size on the basketball court, you know there's no way that other lineup is going to be successful. And then his rationale was just, oh, trying to get more possessions in the basketball game. You know a way to get more possessions in the game? Offensive rebounding. Or rebounding, period. <laughs> so and it just didn't it didn't make sense um, at that time. And that's when I knew it was cooked. Um, you know, I hear you guys on the rookie head coach thing. I, I don't, like, Adelman is someone's name who I, I've wanted for sure. Um, if, if that's not the kind of coach that Brown and AD want, then I'll go against that and say then I'm cool with that. I do think you kind of cater to them in this situation and what they say they want, what kind of coach they think is best for the locker room. Um, I just know that I need a guy in that seat who is smart. Um, that's my first and foremost thing. And second, um, or at least right alongside that, is probably guys – who can um, get this team to buy into the the hustle the hustle stats? 
and the stats that get you more positions in basketball games, the things that we can control. That'd be turnovers, rebounding to some extent, um, being smart, timely with how we make decisions on the offensive end of the court. So things things like that, coaches that can get the guys to buy into that because I think that does play a, a big a part in that. I know a lot of that is players, but I think coaching does also play a big part in those things as well. Um, Mark Jackson, fuck no. Uh, Budenholzer, I would say no, but I think like Rome said, you know, a guy like Mike Brown, people used to think was a trash head coach. He learned from his mistakes to be able to come back better. So I'm not just going to automatically say it's cooked from the beginning if we hire him, even though I don't want to hire him. Um, Kenny is whatever. It's a regular ass head coach, which not, might not be the worst thing here. But Ty Lue, number one candidate for sure. And then for me, um, some of the rookie guys, like like I said, like Adam, it is a name that I would have on the list, but I just don't think that they're going to go that route. Um, as long as they have assistance on staff, though, um, aside from JJ, because fuck no, if they do hire another rookie head coach, I'm not just going to automatically dismiss it, even if I, you know, don't really want it outside of like Adam, because I think it's all about the holistic coaching staff and the philosophy of the coaching staff and the GM and how they're going to make decisions with the roster. I think all of that comes together to make this team either really good or really bad. So I'm going to wait and see of like the whole of how it ends up after free agency and shit before I make my real determination. But like, this is a, is a real good first step. Last, last thing I'll say is, um, or a couple things, niggas who were saying, don't blame Darwin. I want someone to tell me what he was good at. Um, <laughs> And if you can give me that answer, maybe I'll stand down a little bit. Um, there is no answer to that question. Spoiler alert. And then the second thing is, um, Darvin and his presses, if you can already kind of see at the later half of the year, he kind of knew this was coming, I think. And he's already started to say some things that are kind of like trying to save face, uh, especially in his exit interview. I've watched it a few times. And that's definitely a nigga who knew he was on his way out. So. Um, be interested to see what he says um, in his first comments in whatever form that is after this. But great first step. I'm very happy. Uh, Jordan, appreciate it. And also, a narrative that's kind of going around is, oh, my God, four coaches in seven years. Like, when are we going to start putting the blame? When are we going to yeah. start putting the blame elsewhere? I'm like, my question is, were these three niggas good? Exactly. Like, like, oh, like no, 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 Luke, 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 Luke Wong is not a head coach. Luke about to get fired. Craig Vogel right just got fired. Yeah, he's about to get fired. Exactly. And Darvin is not good. So you're yeah, saying four head coaches. coaches. Yeah, we're just hiring niggas at our ass. So I don't understand how the logic of. Maybe they meant the front office blame. I know we're not talking about. Are they blaming the players? Yeah, I know what they're talking about. Luke Wong didn't sniff a dog. Yeah, I got it, bro. <laughs> hey, we can't do that. Really? Should have fired Luke Walker before Rudy. Nick Brown Rudy. ever stepped foot on the Nick court. Really get fired? Really. Tough. No, I ain't gonna go. He should. He'd be the second person. They'll, they'll tell you all these guys uh, are trash. Awesome. They're no blame. I don't know why. The, 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 the he can go. <laughs> but nah, uh, Shelby, uh, you can go ahead, bro. Go to the next speaker. No, I appreciate it. Um, I thought that was interesting. We didn't discuss it at the top because I didn't read any tweets uh, before launching this space. Darvin was notified via phone call. The disrespect is kind of insane uh, for a guy that you stood next to for two years to let him go by phone call. Like this, this well, business. Bring that the back to the like, um, fuck. Well, you come <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say. Like you were standing next to him, sitting with him, roster decisions every media day, taking questions with him. And I know a lot has transpired, a lot has shit hit the fan, but. That tells me shit might have gone really bad to let your head coach of the organization you run know via phone call that you've been dismissed. Um, it's kind of crazy. I think to it me, was. Uh, but reading too much I want to say it was. I think it was. Ant, I think it was Anthony Irwin. Um, he was talking about how because you know how the Lakers had their their exit interviews. They had them in Denver. In Denver. They actually still had their exit interviews when they got back to LA. So there was extra interviews in okay. LA. Are you talking? Private you ones, think privately? Private ones. Like right, with, right, like right. Rob yep, and, yep. and you know the, the yeah, front yeah. office brass. And apparently, yeah. so apparently, like, for, Darvin wasn't even a part of that shit. Really, like apparently, they were like not even talking yeah. to that nigga. So like, he he's kind of been fired. I think he kind of knew what was gonna happen probably as soon as the game ended. Yeah. Um. So it is what it is. Well, he said it in his quotes. He said in his quotes, "It's been a hell of a run." Yeah. Hell of a, hell of a, run, yeah, hell of a so. He said his goodbye. He says goodbye. Uh, you see the well, Ham's the first Laker coach to make the playoffs and not return since. 
since Phil, <laughs> which right. is funny. But I was just going to ask you real quick, Chef. What do you think about the idea that the Lakers actually admitted to making a fucking mistake? Because usually they don't do this, like, right? Like, the rush shit, like, it took them so fucking long to be like, you know what? Yeah, this is ass. Right, um, right. And honestly, we're but, seeing it right now with the D'Angelo Russell decision, right? Like, it's like, ah, oh, no, right. let's just keep them, see what happens. And now it's like, well, you're going to have to. Well, well, Rome, this is what this was my only pushback to you back in like January or February because about them not firing because I we all felt like the front office was that stubborn to where they had to admit to the Westbrook mistake, but come hell or high water, they were not gonna do that twice uh, and and let their ego fall down and admit to this mistake. But then that's what I said at the top of the space where all the events transpiring, LeBron free agency, losing to Denver in five. Um, the quotes that came out, uh, whether that's from players that are going to stay on this team or not, that that had to be the final edge with everything going on. And that's why we were all really comfortable saying in April that, you know, if he doesn't make a significant run again, he's more than likely out of here. So I think that for them to let go of their stubbornness again, albeit in a two year span, which is, which is short to me for a new coach, um, this is a step in the right direction. Everybody who follows covers and is a fan of the Los Angeles Lakers can recognize that. So I'm just I'm happy they they didn't even get ahead of the curve. They just finally caught on to yeah. the curve. So that's and I think what, I think really what it is is LeBron James, right? Like if LeBron wasn't in yeah, the situation, bro. who knows what they really would have done, right? Like if, if LeBron James wasn't essentially like, bro, like I might not even stay here. Like imagine you know what the front office would have been enabled to think, right? So I think did that anyone right, right. did anyone ever say anything good about him? Okay, like player watch. Um. Yeah, yeah. I drop came back. Did anyone ever say anything good about him during his entire tenure? Like as a no. player? No. <laughs> like, not really. He's bro. A black man. Besides Rob Linka? No. <laughs> yeah, just the players. I don't remember any player saying anything uh, good about him. Wait, no. uh, wait. His entire tenure. Have you heard Darvin say, "Yeah, that was on me. I gotta be better." Never. Never. Dead ass. Never. Never. I don't think. I think when we won, he was like, "Yeah." Never. And, and you remember the, the playoff run last year, bro? Like, every single – I'll never forget this, bro. The entire three rounds, all the role players said, yeah, no, we look at LeBron and AD. They're leading the charge. I've never seen them this focused before and more hands-on, more vocal, everything. Like, you rarely heard that. I mean, it's the typical, you know, our coaching staff got us prepared. Our coaching staff got us prepared. Everything of that sort. But – I think that's why people are reluctant to give Darvin that kind of credit for last year's run is because you, I can literally pull six, seven, eight quotes from all the role guys saying we go as LeBron and AD go because they took their communication level there to within that locker room to a new level last uh, May. So I, I think I think you saw the writing on the wall there. So I, I mean, it, it's just tough, and he did lose the locker room and too. So. He probably is um, the worst quotable coach of all time. Like I don't think there's a coach. That has consistently worse quotes than this nigga, bro. Like when he told the whole fan base, "Stop fucking living and dying with every game." Like, dog, that was a that was a yeah. fucking, nah, he had some was, bangers. You, you see the you see the ESPN quote that he had where he said like, <laughs> "Well, if, if your guys are shooting the bed for ten games in a row, yeah. what are you supposed yeah. to do?" <laughs> Yeah, he was like, spinning back right there, too. He, I mean, he was, but, like, you can't say that. You can't say it, though. Like, Your brother's on the ropes right now. Yeah, nah, he's the... Uh, it's nah, tough, nice. bro. It's tough. He, he, some of the worst quotes. Remember he said, we'll be fine. Trust me. We Respect, really? Like, well, bro, this nigga just that shit. Bro, I'll never forget, and I keep saying this, this nigga blamed Christmas for a loss, bro. Like, he said, we got family in town and shit, bro. Like, <laughs> oh, he did yeah, say yeah, that? Bro. I mean, it's the holiday season. Like, I, 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 how you gonna stop going to the time for Thanksgiving? Bro, I don't know blame that. It's like, the most like, wonderful time of the year. Like, what do you expect? Yeah, yeah, nah. Darwin, the quotes, man. I don't think there's a coach that has the worst quotes than Darwin, like, ever, bro. I'm not even kidding. Like, I'm not even trying to be biased. Like, some of the worst quotes. Like, the shit on the entire fan base is crazy, bro. Like, and the nigga was always in defense mode all the fucking time. Nigga's always defending himself. I think, to me, y'all niggas talk about the last straw and shit. I think it was pretty obvious what the last straw was to me. And That we don't know like, what we're doing? No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, 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 exactly. The fucking Anthony Davis... We don't know what the fuck we're doing. And yeah, people, yeah. You know, there was, like, rumors that, like, that pissed off the front office. You know why it pissed AD off the front part. office? It, it pissed off the front office because Coach they, killer. they knew Coach killer. they couldn't oh, keep this shit going another season. That's why it pissed off the front office. Because AD, like, yeah. AD don't even beat – he don't even talk like that. Like, that nigga's AD is, like, non-confrontational in the media when it comes to, like, 
like shitting on like anyone. Even when he requested a trade, that nigga wasn't even on no type of like yeah. bullshit. Fuck the Pelicans, not like never, bro. Like for him to say that shit, yeah. Especially like directly at the coach. <laughs> and what made it worse was that Darvin Ham's response was, "Nah, nigga, my coaching staff valid. We're organized. We do our thing." AD was just mad. That that shit, bro. That was like. What worst way to show a disconnect between franchise player and yeah. franchise coach? That right there, that's why the Lakers front office was pissed. Because they're like, fuck, we got to get rid of this nigga. Bro. And, the, and the logic didn't even make sense. Because in that moment uh, where the series was at, what do you gain out of uh, sticking up for your coaching staff? Because the heat was already there. There was nothing to gain out, out of there. You know Anthony Davis is there long term. Just take the lump and move on to game four. So I just really don't understand going to bat. If that's what was his intent was, going to bat for his guys, it just was not well-timed or well-placed whatsoever. You also proceeded so, to lose the series uh, after like that. that. So I don't even know what the fuck. Like, yeah. Like, like, <laughs> yeah, in embarrassing I'm fashion. Like, um, what, one, embarrassing thing I, one thing I will say, um, one thing I will say too, uh, uh, before we go to speakers again, uh, reading the comments, someone said, I want to hear Shub's response to the Kendrick diss. Uh, in the quotes of LeBron James, we got to keep the main thing the main thing, and that's where we're going to be. That's Then, um, and so, and <laughs> Some, so, some, somebody's another thing too. Right my my, my, my <laughs> biggest ploy right now. It just the weekend's coming up, brother. Yeah, bro. Go check yeah, out. six sixteen uh, AM. Um, no, we got to we got to keep it moving. He used um, like a time stamp. Dar- <laughs> Facts. Darvin home. Dar- Darvin Ham. Darvin Ham coached one hundred sixty four games. As a Los Angeles for the Los Angeles Lakers, I believe this man got one technical in the entire span. That's what really grinds my gears to one technical um, for a guy that's supposed to rally the troops, be motivational. Why the fuck couldn't you motivate the refs to uh, make some calls our way when LeBron James was getting slaughtered on the basketball court? So that's another lump that I, I take personally. I didn't like it all. Um, my franchise player is officially a coach killer, and I could not be happier. That's the last thing I'll say. Um, but we're gonna keep it moving, though. I'm gonna hear from. I'm gonna hear from. Uh, I'll go to Duke Nation. Uh, Duke Nation, your your thoughts on that? And we'll go to we'll go to Felix after. I'm not gonna lie to you. I feel like we just won the NBA Finals, bro. We just fired this nigga, bro. Like dead ass. Um, I really want to say there were three instances where. James, let me know. Wait, I can't. I, can't I, I, I would think there was. Lucky. Three Wait, can y'all hear me? Hello. Thank God. Yeah, we, yeah. we can. Unfortunately, okay, there were there were three there were three instances where Darvin was gone. It was the Clippers game when they clearly LeBron just said, "Fuck it, I'm taking over the game. Like I'm not listening to anything you got to say. I'm just taking over." And I think they listed that in the article they released. Uh, the second one was the AD when he came on and said, "We don't know what the fuck we're doing." And then the third one, I think it was the challenge when LeBron literally was about to punch that nigga and say, like, that that was it. Um, he just was never a good coach. Like, he didn't know how to adjust. He stuck to his guns. He said, it's going to be this. And now we're not doing anything else. Um, and, again, y'all spoke on it. I honestly think it would have been a waste to keep him, a, a, a waste for us to go on a Western Conference final run because it would have been like, oh, well, we did it again. Why not try to build on it? Because it's just – the fact that in, we played Denver and we were winning the entirety of the game and you didn't adjust, and then you come out and say after game one, oh, I don't want to throw out all my adjustments right now because it's a seven-game series. Like, bro, like, why Why wouldn't you want to steal one in Denver to to possibly, you know, even up, even up the series and then you're going back 1-1 at home? Then you had it to where you're coming up with these dumbass quotes. His, he might have the dumbest coach I've ever seen in my life. He's not. A, he's just not a coach. He never held people to uh, accountable. He says, "Oh, if a player is playing bad ten games in a row, are you gonna like? What are you gonna do? Like, bro, like bench him." How many times have we said in a in a in a span when Austin or D'Lo are, are playing terribly, just like either give him a day off? Find a way to bring up boss. Like, how many times did niggas say Austin needs a fucking break because he can't fucking shoot? Everybody has said to give him a some type of rest, and you let him play the entirety of the season. Then, like it's just like bro, it never, it never gelled. And I just honestly felt like LeBron and AD came to a conclusion and said, you know what, this guy's not the guy that's going to get us there. Now, what I will say is, Rob needs to go too. Rob does not get a scapegoat for this. He doesn't. 
because for one, he, I, what I don't understand is from a, from a fan perspective standpoint is why we're always late to the party with everything. Because Russ should have been gone the first year. It was no reason to keep Russ anymore because it just didn't work. Then you make the trade to go get D'Lo and all them, which I think was a great trade. I don't know why motherfuckers keep bringing up Mike Conley. Like, that was, a, like, choosing D'Lo over Mike Conley. Like, anybody would have took D'Lo over fucking Mike Conley. I'm not going to sit up there and say that Mike Conley is the difference between fucking a championship or not. But, I mean, it's neither here or there. But... The problem, like I said, the problem that I have is as um, as a Laker fan, these these last I think James, you brought it up. He's fired uh, three coaches in in the last seven years. All of them are really have ties to the Lakers. Darvin has some ties to the Lakers. I don't know if I, Frank didn't have any ties to the Lakers, but um, Luke had ties to the Lakers. Um, Mike Brown didn't, and I, I know we hired Derek Fisher for like a point in time, but like bro, like. What are y'all doing in these interviews to where you're looking and seeing, oh, somebody like Darvin who sat under Mike Budenholzer, you thought they can I don't I don't even know Mike Budenholzer's coaching tree like that for us to even hire him. He's with the Spurs. Okay. Under pop. Right. So my thing and I and Jordan, me and you have talked back and forth about this. I like Mike Budenholzer. I mean, I know people think he's just another Darvin, but honestly, if you look at Budenholzer's kind of resume the man took the hawks with literally just a a bunch of role players and al horford and you know if it wasn't for lebron maybe they would have made the finals who knows i'm not gonna sit there and say that i know for sure then i mean he won with the bucks i know it was covid but he what for some strange reason the bucks fired him and Giannis was hurt. Like, he was seen as a scapegoat for that. I'm going to lie, gang. They won in spite of Budaholzer. I'm sorry, bro. I can't let you get the Budaholzer I mean, takeoff, bro. If they, and James, if they, if they did, so be it. He literally was about to get fired if KD and fucking Bro, did Kyrie you see him in that net series? He was actually on the way out. And, 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 and that's and 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 about to get fired. The nigga, nigga was playing Giannis 30 minutes. And that's understandable. But, again, I think some coaches learn from their mistakes. Now, I'm with you guys. <laughs> I'm with you guys. I'm with you guys with Kenny Atkinson because again, you talk about somebody who hasn't really won with talent. Like if we look at that next team that went to the playoffs when it was just D'Lo, Dinwiddie, and a bunch of like shitty people. I mean, he did take that team to the playoffs. I just want someone who can hold these motherfuckers accountable, no matter if you're a star player or not. That's going to pull the bond to the side and be like, "Hey, bro, like that was a dumbass turnover. Like, why are you doing that? You know what I'm saying? Like someone like Ty Lue that. It's respected amongst everybody in the league. Somebody like I want to I don't want to say Spoke because that's not gonna happen, but I want someone like that who's gonna win no matter who you put out there and can develop players. Again, I'm not gonna sit there and act like the Clippers have done shit, but again, they've never been healthy. They're not healthy now. And they're gonna lose. They're probably gonna lose because Kawhi hasn't been healthy, but and he's gonna be scapegoated for that. But like I said, it's it's just a matter of you have to get a GM and coach who are on the same type of time. Rob is not a good he's not a good GM. He's not. I don't understand why he's putting out statements because he really should be fired in the next couple of weeks. Because again, we've all talked about it. What has he really done? Honestly, besides the really the Westbrook trade that bought us D'Angelo Russell and them. Like, has he really done anything? Can somebody tell me? Honestly. He knows Kobe Bryant. Like I, I really don't know what he what he's done. He he signed shit free agents. I ain't gonna lie, but look, he's, look, 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 but look though. Some of this shit, some of this shit is not always on Rob. Like if you're trying to blame him for like certain trades. Oh, no, 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 hell no, we're not doing. Let me out. We are not. We all for Rob. Brother, real is coming off the mic. Hey, chill out. Let him, brother, mute up. Uh, oh my, so I can't. Four kids, Reese. Recess then ending. I, um, oh, yeah, let Rel get let Rel get his take yeah, on. Yeah, let Rel go. No, I don't care. I'm, I... It's not Rel. Yeah, Romano, like... Romano, Romano died, folks. 
real, six, you can six, go ahead, bro. Six, six, not my kid. Candle. It ain't. I mean, like shit. I understand like where niggas coming from. They watch six sixteen was the okay, best one. When they say when they say Rob, you for Rob, him. Rob not in favor. He not doing certain shit that niggas want him to do. But like, like we said, like we agreed on this shit, bro. It's not always in Rob hands, like bro. Some of the times the other teams GM, like with some of the trades niggas on, it's not always in Rob, bro. Like it's sometimes it's them. Like shit with the Kyrie trade, it wasn't up to Rob in that in that type of situation, bro. Yeah. I mean, I mean, hey, I don't know the detail. I ain't no fucking NBA agent, so I am I don't know the back door. But look, like I said, from what I, I heard, man, we, from what I heard, bro, it's not always in like, bro, we don't know how trades work. It's not just like Rob is okay, Rob, you did Rob, Rob, you gotta do this, you gotta make the offer, and if it don't go through, it's your fault. Like nigga, that's not how this shit works. Then bro. then blame the motherfucker that's signing his check. The motherfucker that hired him. But how, bro? Okay, all right, man. I, don't, I, don't, I, I, I can't really change a nigga outlook. I just have my own personal opinion on it. I'm just not gonna, I'm not gonna shit on Rob because I don't know how it, being a GM is, bro. I've seen him try to make offers. If the team don't accept his offer, well, Coping. he make a good offer, and they just be like, "Fuck it, we don't want to do it anyway." What a train's at? What a train's at for the sale? I'm hearing. But I don't know if he made a good offer. Mm. Yeah, but what, what are you basing on that he made a good offer? I don't. Yeah. I mean, that's a whole different discussion. That's what I'm saying. Sound real? He hasn't heard. Rel is saying. Rel is just saying that we don't actually know. Exactly. That's what, what I'm saying. We don't actually know. Like, what is he doing? Like, we just going off media shit. We don't know if he's actually. You also don't know what the niggas even allowed to do. Like, we can't act like a lord. We can't act like a lord. Wait, Which is why I'm way more president of the basketball no, operations. Lie, so we, we, the you. reason why the nigga has his job is because he's agreeable to whatever is, he's being asked. Yeah, he's the president of basketball yeah. operations. Yeah. The basketball is not being operated. Exactly. That's, 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 I mean, Ron, which, Ron, which is why Darvin is dancing. Way way hey, Ron, my guess is why Darvin is way worse than my guess. Because Darvin, you know that nigga. Twitter just got a bunch of front office and a bunch of GMs now, so we know what the fuck going on. You know how it go now. So we just all know that. I just get what you're saying. Whether it's right or wrong. Whether it's right or wrong, he's not even saying He's not even saying Rob's good at his job. Nigga just saying, but we don't know exactly what the fuck is happening. Behind the scenes, in regards to that shit, but, but you can do that with everybody. You can do that with Darwin. We don't know what. Oh, no, what's going on with Darwin? Do no, no, you can't do that with Darwin. Right. Yeah, you yeah. cannot. You can because they, they did it with Volvo. They did it with Volvo. Is those sanctions are they forcing them to do it? This space is crazy. Uh, hey, hold on, bro. Zay, 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 bro. We see what Darwin has expected to garner interest from other head coaching vacancies around the NBA. We see what Darwin. They literally did it with bro. Throw another crayon. I swear to God, they literally did it with Nets and Wizards. Nets and Wizards. Yes, yes. We see what Ham do on live fucking television. Who has kids in the background? But nah, we all like him. We all like that's me. <laughs> we told him uh, Duke Nation, uh, appreciate your take. Uh, let's let's go to the next speaker. Uh, by far. Um, Why? Because you can. We just right? got to keep it moving. Uh, <laughs> Rel, we appreciate it. I, I do see what you're saying as well, bro. Like, we don't know what's going on in that room. Felix, we'll go to you, bro. You've been waiting. Uh, Felix, go ahead. Your, your thoughts on everything. We'll go to you. And we'll go to the next one. working hours. Yeah, you you kind of choppy for me, but I mean, no one has some bets. Uh, yeah, it's on Am I good? Am I good now or what? Yeah, now nah, you're good. Yeah. All right, yeah. I, I got a meeting in a few, so I'm not going to be up here too long. Uh, first off, I agree, Rob does need Must to be, be nice. I don't know why the fuck we shooting that nigga bail. Like, what the fuck? Like, we, like, JHS is on the team because of Rob. Not Cam, not Jacquez. JHS is on the team because of Rob. The reason why we don't have young. Young players that are like a wing or a center or other things that are basic fucking knowledge of things that we need is because of Rob. That nigga will veto shit because he feels like it. And it's yes, it's his fault that people don't like him because he's not a lockable person when he was an agent. That's not yes, that's your fault that people don't fuck with you. You were an asshole. And now you are in a position that people are rock with you. That's yes, that nigga should be fired too. I agree. Because when I remember when both him and Darwin were hired. I'm sorry, when he got his extension and Darwin was hired, they said, we're tying these two together and they're in lockstep. And what Rob does, Darwin agrees with. And what Darwin does, Rob agrees with. I remember that. I forget that shit. You can look at it in the press conference. So yes, if we saying that Darwin should go, I agree. Rat nigga Rob should go too. He's mid at absolute best. And I'm sick and tired of having mid on my squad when we are in a quote unquote window or we got two stars on our shit. Like it's annoying. Um, As far as Darwin, I'm happy that nigga's gone, bro. I could give less of a fuck of whether it was fair or not. They lucky they didn't send that nigga mail via pigeon. He's he's lucky he even knows that he got fired. I would have I would have just moved on and not even told him. I would have just let that nigga assume and and said, hey, we're doing interviews and other shit like that. And I wouldn't even told him because you should know, bro. That nigga knew. I'll be surprised they even let him get back on the plane and come back to LA. I would have made that nigga buy his own fucking flight. 
his bum bald headed ass. I've been trying to get this nigga fired since halfway through this first year. He is the first coach I have truly actually detested. Actually disliked as a person. Actually disliked the like how Kendrick said, I hate the way you walk, I hate the way you talk. That's how I felt about Darwin, bro. Like it, and I'm not even trying to be like on no funny shit. Like from basic shit to timeouts to just the blatant lack of accountability to throwing players under the bus to acting as though we don't know what the fuck we're talking about. And when I say we, I mean the players, the organization, the people outside of the organization, we all have fucking eyes. This nigga, we, bro. Bro, that nigga we lost, Russell Westbrook. We lost to Miami without Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo. And this nigga blamed our loss to Miami on injuries when LeBron and AD played. We lost to the Nets. We lost to Detroit in December. And this nigga said, hey, yo, all that, that we can't we stop living and dying by every game. Huh? That December stretch, that December stretch. The we never game. lost to Detroit, but go ahead. We almost did, my fault. We almost did. I counted that as L, but we did beat them, but it was too close. But um, we that December stretch that we had where we had all them losses is the direct reason why we played Denver in the first round. Because if we had won three or four more games, we wouldn't have been in that C situation. So, like, you literally tricked off the whole season, as Shango would say, for Terry and Prince, and you tricked off the whole season last year for Dennis Shooter. But you came on talking about facts over feelings, bro. I'm happy that nigga's gone, bro. It's super easy. And last thing I'm going to say is, the disorganization quote really pissed me off because we can see the percentage of organized offense drop from the first half to the second half and drop quarter by quarter on top of us just having fucking eyes. And so when a player who is your best player who had 30 points in the third quarter and took one shot in the fourth says, we don't know what we're doing, especially offensively. You say, well, I disagree with that. What do you mean you disagree with that? That's that's blatantly obvious. If 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 you are running an organized, if if the, if you being organized is blowing a 20 point lead to a team that's beaten you 11 straight times, then you don't deserve to have a job. Like it's it's really just that simple, bro. And it also to that report that Ron said, what I heard was it actually wasn't the front office that was mad. I heard the only people that were actually upset was Darvin. Nobody else was mad. From what I heard, it was only Darwin who was upset that AD said that quote. Nobody else had any issue with him saying that shit. <laughs> so I'm glad he's fired, bro. Um, I am concerned about who we pick. That's kind of why I do want Ty Lue. I don't think he's exceptional or anything. I think he's above average. But, like, I'd rather them just take Ty Lue. I would like David, but I don't think you can go with a rookie coach. I think you should just take Ty Lue because, like I've said, Luke Walton, Vogel, Darwin, this front office, um history and resume for picking coaches especially as of late isn't very good so just give me a guy that's above average and, and let's just go from there bro hopefully we can you know win some shit but yeah fuck that nigga i hate the way that you walk i hate the way that you talk and use the last check that you got to get a surgery on your bald headed pimple face ass you dumbass bitch ass nigga all right i gotta go i gotta be at work appreciate it dog appreciate it um yeah i mean i just want to say this real quick man hurry up bro let's get why is this nigga still up here? Um. Anyways, yeah, bro, that scapegoat and shit gotta stop, man. Y'all gotta stop calling every fucking coach a scapegoat. Like that shit is so fucking like, bro. You're literally like <laughs> niggas watch eighty two plus of this nigga, bro. Like every season, like y'all, <laughs> y'all gotta stop calling these niggas scapegoats, man. Like this shit is. Vogel was a scapegoat, and now the nigga's about to get fired again. A second time in fucking two seasons as a coach. Like, bro, y'all got to stop that shit, man. Mike Budenholzer was on the hot seat for three fucking years. That nigga was not a scapegoat when he got fucking fired, dude. Like, this shit is just... Y'all do this shit every fucking time, bro. It's like you niggas just want to be different, dude. When Russell Westbrook was on the team, the nigga's not a scape. He's a scapegoat, dude. It's not his fault. Y'all built this roster. Well, I'm watching the nigga on a better fucking balanced roster with a better coach and a better situation on a better contract. And guess what? The nigga still sucks. Y'all got to stop this fucking scapegoat shit, bro. It is not true. 
It's not fucking true. If AD is coming out saying, yo, this nigga does not have us prepared for games, how the fuck is he a scapegoat? The nigga on the team is saying it. If D'Angelo Russell is saying, yeah, I couldn't really build a relationship with the nigga because nigga kind of picking favorites. If Austin Reed is saying, I don't know why the fuck I was benched. If Rui Hachimura is saying, yeah, I don't know why I don't get him more minutes. If Jared Vanderbilt was saying, yo, like, something has to add up at some point, right? Something, bro. Stop calling all these niggas scapegoats, man. That shit is not true. Niggas is lying. Just stop it, bro. Player to you can't be a scapegoat and it be your fault. Season. I don't think I've ever exhibit a one coach in a season before. Um, the evidence is entirely there. The only person that was silent because he's bound to be silent. Otherwise, the narrative about him will continue again about being a coach killer is LeBron James. He had to take the high road the entire two years and the political stance of like, I can't go against this coach or say anything bad, even though you guys are trying to bait me into that because I have too much riding on that. So every single, every single person uh, behind LeBron James on the totem pole of this team had something to say about the head coach, which is insane to me. Absolutely insane to me. So definitely not a scapegoat. I agree with Rome. Um, watch the games. Literally watch the games and see how they're, they're messing this whole roster up, which shouldn't be that confusing to begin with. Um, we appreciate it, uh, Felix. We're going to keep it moving. Um, Gas, been waiting for a minute. I'm going to go to Gas. Uh, Gas, your thoughts on Darvin Ham leaving, bro? Um, <clears throat> my brothers and sisters. I'm looking at or Gas out of here. You said what? Gas going once. Yeah, Yo, he's talking. Right, talking, right, talking. We can hear him. He's talking. Oh, he's your friend. friend. Show, <laughs> drop down, bro. Do I got to put my hand down? Uh, yeah. Of course, you Show. back up. Thoughts on 660? <laughs> Do I got to put my hand over to get called, bro? Yes, let's try that. Okay. Shut up. Can you hear Brian? Gas, who's on you? I can't. Hold on, put no. my hand up. I got you. Lucky. Yeah, Shut up. I can't even hear you. Why are you asking to speak, by the way? But now, um, no, I just picked up. Yeah, I just picked up. Appreciate Shut you guys knocking about you. Go ahead. Fuck you. Like, yo, y'all hear me? Yo, yo, yeah, I can hear you, bro. Yeah, you can uh, uh, My brothers and sister in Laker Nation, maybe we remember this day as a great one. Um, sadly, we got the playoffs right now. We're not competing for a chip anymore, but we got rid of one part of the problem. Um, Darvin Ham, as much as I hate to see a black man lose his job, my nigga, you had to go. You had to go, bro. Uh, shit didn't work. You said you was here for one reason, that was to make the rush shit work. Russ been gone. You should have went with him. Real shit. Um, I hope you and your family figure some shit out. I'm hearing rumors that you might be the Hornets' next head coach, so you might be in my city. When I see you, nigga, it's on site. Um, just for the shit that you put my team through. Uh, Zay, you told me you had some bad bitches with you. Why do I hear kids in the background? Um, ah. Uh, I gotta get back to work, but goddamn, yeah, fuck that nigga. He gone. Um, Kenny Agassiz or goddamn Ty Lu. Need the clips to lose tonight. Taking that Mavericks money line. That's my lock for the day. Join the Discord. Grand Goons. I'm going to post some shit later. Yes, sir. Free Rio, nigga. Yeah, uh, guys, appreciate it. And uh, good luck with Darvin in your city. Um, How about oh, that? Yeah, you about to be a Hornet, gay? Okay? <laughs> Shit, I'm a Laker fan. What the fuck are you doing? Like, lots of matches, man. Heaven, bro. Nigga, nigga. we're going to the game. Watch the Darvin Ham. <laughs> Only Carolina teams I support, nigga, is the Panthers and the fucking Hurricanes, and my niggas in the second round. That's, no, that's crazy. Yes, yeah. we appreciate. No, uh, uh, right, appreciate we'll go Cali Toss, nigga. Uh, Cali Toss, you a Bron Toss? Uh, Don't forget that. I ain't gonna hold y'all. Don't forget you, a Kobe Toss. You know you. I ain't gonna hold y'all up long. Uh, Cali Toss, nigga, stop playing with me. Watch. Like no time, Cali Toss. You was just advocating for Bron to the Knicks. Don't forget no, that I last wasn't, night, James. Well, we we started the Jordan. Yeah, we started the Jordan. That's a fucking lie. Niggas saw that fucking context. Here you go. Shout out Jay Z. Hey, shout, shout out, out Jay Z. Square Garden. Oh yeah, I got Trey talking. Congrats. But now um, I can't hear James. That's gas. Nice. Appreciate it. I'm not dropping. Um, let's go to the next speaker. Go ahead, Brian. I ain't gonna hold y'all up long. I gotta go to work in thirty minutes, but. Brother, that's the whole 30. I think I'm muted. I think he... The disrespect, see? You see, James, I never did this to you when I took you under my wing. Uh, like, you feel me? But anyways, um, it was about time Darwin got uh, fired. Um, if you knew, last season, I wanted, I wanted Handy 
of course, um, a lot of people went against it. That's cool. I didn't, I didn't want him, um, because I didn't like that pimple on his forehead. First off, that shit is nasty as fuck. But um, personally, I low key feel like that. You know, when you don't have a locker room that respects you, especially when you got two stars and AD and Brian, and you don't have their respect as far as a head coach of X's and O's, it's really no point of you being there. You feel me? So, like, me personally, it's a lot of Laker fans out there who were saying, oh, they would have liked Rondo as the head coach or whatever like that. But if that's the case, then why don't you like J.J. Reddick as a head coach? Now, granted, Rondo got rings. I get that. You know what I'm saying? He's a championship caliber player. I, I totally get that. But on the flip side, you can't want Rondo and not want J.J. Reddy also. I mean, he's because black. Brian trusts, so. Because Brian trusts Rondo. Oh, just, my just God. Missed, you just go. missed, you on, just wait, wait, missed the on, one on. reason. Wait, you wait, would, hold on. wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. I'm not saying. I'm not advocating for J.J. Reddy. I'm not. Me, personally, like y'all, I don't mind, you know, Kenny Atkinson. It's a lot of people saying Edelman. You know what I'm saying? I, me, personally, just get a coach that Brian and A.D. can work with. Period. Just that. Because at the point now, the Lakers are now wanting to buy in fully on Brian. Now they want to go and pay a coach, which, in all honesty, it should have been Ty Lue already, but everybody already know why that didn't happen. But once again, and Handy's not going to – Handy not getting the head coach's spot. Like, Handy going to play his position. He's going to play his role to a T, which is a development coach, and check A.B. and Brian or other players when needed. That's Handy's role, and that's what he's going to play. So at this point right now, it just comes down to what coach out there that Braun and AD can see, like, okay, look, I trust his game plan. I trust his X and O. We can get down with that. That's really what it is. And I don't know who said it, but somebody brought up how Rob and Lincoln need to go. I totally 100% agree with that because, and some of y'all going to back uh, push back on it. That's cool. I will most definitely listen to Wop. But every move that is happening on the Lakers, nine times out of ten, it has Clutch or LeBron name on it signed off on it like we have not seen one move that doesn't have oh somehow clutch uh representative is in there or a clutch player is in the trade with whoever blah 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 to get who so it's like at this point it's like you have two shit first where you just got one shit gone from an ass cheat now you gotta figure out the other one because obviously nobody fucks with rob one for one nobody fucks with rob unless there's clutch like oh hey you know, Rich Paul, hey, look, 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 I understand that CAA doesn't fuck with them. But on the flip side, business is business. So if they're not doing business with you, maybe I can convince them, like, hey, I got a player who contract is this. We can make it work with you. And y'all can figure out between Rob what picks y'all want to use or whatever like that. But as far as player for player wise and money wise and contract wise, it nine times out of ten, it's coming down to a, you're going to hear a source from Clutch, which is, with it Shams, or you might hear a, a Woj piece saying something about that. So that's just that's just what it is. Um, and one thing, and, and last thing before I go, and a lot of y'all already know how I felt about Frank Vogel when he was a coach. My thing is, and not trying to make excuses for him, y'all know I hate him. He's on a hate list with Westbrook and, and Darvin Hill. But you can't be mad at Vogel for not being able to play and do his role when you don't give him players for his specific role, you can't ask him to be a defensive coach, a top 10 defensive coach, and you giving him players who aren't, the, who aren't good at defense. Like, granted, his offense stinks. Yes, that's true. His rotation stinks. I get it. But you can't be mad at him for not doing a specific job that he is asked to do when he don't have players to do that job for him. Plus, also, when a coach is asking for something specifically and you don't give him that, you are shit. We've seen the past three years, Bron has asked for a point guard to take the low off of him so he can do what he is doing, which we just seen what he can do. So it's like when you have a player of his caliber asking for a certain player and somehow, some way, you're not making it, you're not making no moves to get that player for him because obviously he sees something that's like, hey, give me this player so I can please take some low off of me during the games so when it comes to clutch moments or in the playoffs, I am fully 100% locked in and ready to bring this game home, whether AD is with me or not. So once again, you know, I would like to hear the pushback on the, um, shit, I forgot what it was. I'm about to go to work. Y'all have a good one.
Yeah, I appreciate it, bro. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think nobody's up here saying fucking Rob Plank needs to keep his job or anything, bro. It's just like, it's just funny how niggas are like, well, at what point are we going to make this about? It's like, all right, nigga, we get it, bro. But right now, we fired a dog shit coach, nigga. So can we just focus on the fact that we fired this bum ass nigga, man? You niggas always try to make this shit about something else, bro. I'm not even talking about Brian. I'm not talking about you, gang. I'm just saying in general, like, Bro, we've been saying the nigga Rob Palenka, like, probably shouldn't be the GM for the Lakers. Like, that that's not, like, some crazy... Niggas are just figuring this out because you don't watch the fucking games. You don't follow the fucking team. You're just fucking speaking off a reaction to a big fucking breaking news fucking bit. This is why niggas do this shit on Fridays. Because they know niggas like y'all that don't pay attention to this shit are actually going to start talking about it now. That's the whole point. But whatever. It is what it is, bro. We moving on. Uh, who yeah, got this um... show? Um, uh, I think show sure, washing dishes. Um, but um, oh, we can go to, yeah, we can go to uh, Vince Smoke, and then we'll go to um. Some oh yeah, this nigga been hating Darvin. Go ahead, man. Facts. Go ahead, Vince Smoke. I know you happy today, nigga. Yeah. Uh, shout out my. They got a suit on man. for this shit. <laughs> hating a black man. Oh, this nigga wearing a tuxedo. This one, who's the fan Look at my fan Look, 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 hold on. Zay, tell your children to shut the fuck up. Oh, my God. Damn. Why is that? Jesus. Hey, fucking you the co-host, I would. Why you got to be a friend? Preschool? Hey, you a whole red, though. Why are you there? At Walmart somewhere? Why are you a whole red? Hey, I don't know who's talking. One Negro talks. I got to kick. But now, um, this one, you can go ahead. I got to kick. I gotta kick. I got to kick everyone out and then bring you. If you're on stage right now, Yeah, request back up so I can hear you. Yeah. So I know who's like, uh, who's who's coming up. I, I know who's up. So just, uh, James, go ahead and read out our sponsor. And All right. Um, shout out to our sponsors, uh, Manscaped. You know, Sears. You know, a couple guys that fuck with us. Appreciate the sponsorships. Uh, that's all I got. <clears throat> Sears is insane, bro. <laughs> Living in two thousand and five. That's all we can get, brother. We working though. We working. We working. I ain't been a Sears in since Neither 2007, bro. Still, <laughs> ain't, ain't no Sears out here. Oh, my Swipe God. is not on the stage. I don't know. Uh, why. Never mind. That's crazy. Yeah, I don't know why. You got a, a lot of shame. Did I kick Rome out? No we kicked the coach, out. yeah. All this going in evaluations. Evaluations. Like, you part yeah. of those evaluations. You, you on the outside okay. looking in, brother. One plus one. I wouldn't know. Listen, I don't know you seen that offer I got there. I got some offers out here. Oh, yeah? Offers. Sidelines. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's on Vince Smoke. Hopefully I can well, What's up, guys. black people? What's up, Shep? Uh, what's up? Okay. <laughs> that was crazy. But uh, <laughs> uh, uh-huh. Vince Smoke, it's on you, bro. What? It's on Vince Smoke. Oh, my fault. My fault. I was stuck on mute. Uh, that nigga swiped me. <laughs> what's up, black people? Um... <laughs> Uh, I guess he was not talking to Drake. But listen, um, can niggas hear me okay? No, you good, bro. I was at that. I was at that. Stop clicking your pen. Yeah, I was at that. 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 I kicked everyone. I kicked everyone out of the space so I could hear you, and you reward me with that statement. Like, this. Oh, my God. You think it's crazy. Wait, wait, wait. With Vince Smoke, is that why Drake, is that why a show's favorite? Yeah, Shut let's up. not make this about Drake, please. Um Vince Mo, Vince Mo, you can get your um you can get to your take. Um and let's hope let's hope somebody disses Jay Z. You know, let's get some fire out here. Vince Mo, kiss on you. Weekend just started. You worried about a Canadian. Is it really weak? No, nah, uh Vince Mo, kiss on you, go ahead. Yeah, I don't know why this nigga swipe would be talking to me like yeah, what's up? <laughs> mm. Maybe I might acknowledge that you follow me back. You know what I'm saying? We can acknowledge each other at times. But look, anyway, um, <laughs> it's so weird. It's so weird. They think it's ugly. Anyway, um, as far as as far as Darwin being fine, somebody said you dig right. My bad. Rail, rail, boy, yo, yo, yo. You sucking a little <laughs> boy, bit of dick right now. Oh, uh, bro, what is what is with y'all, bro? My it's fault, smoke. man. Get my fault. Off. I'm trying to get my take off. God no, damn, dude. You keep off. talking fucking okay. to the other niggas. Like, brother, get your take off. You saying some shit to them is going to make them respond, bro. Just get your take off, bro. He was dick riding, though. 
Uh, post the Kobe video while you at it. Yeah, it's, go ahead, it's bro. all in your mouth. Bro, we one. need a thing. Never mind. Uh, listen. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's funny as fuck because I just remember it, this just takes me back, man. So many fucking memories. Like I remember my first ever space um, in Coach's Den. I remember listening to Coach Xavier uh, give all types of bail for Darvin Ham talking about. Well, I mean, what are you? What is a nigga supposed to do? And yada yada yada. And I remember, you know, what I'm saying, requesting up. I was a little scared. I'm probably You're lucky like, I didn't have a spot. Uh, once you <laughs> God damn, shut your kids up. But look, I remember a lot of motherfuckers, like myself, with a lot of motherfuckers in request. I was a little shook to, you know, what I'm saying, request up at first. I was like, damn, it's a big. Oh, what if niggas clown my text and that a third? But at a certain point, I just couldn't take the shit anymore, bro. This nigga Zay was giving Darvin Ham all types of fucking bail. Uh, so I had to stand on business, nigga. Uh, <laughs> I had to stand on business, and that's how I, and that's how you know the Vince Smoke that you know today. Um, it was literally me checking this fuck nigga, Coach Xavier, and his apologetic Darvin Ham apologetic ass. You think Sean Davis is bad? This nigga will come oh back after the games and be like. <laughs> this nigga will come back after games and be like, listen, he's a black man. Can he coach? Please? <laughs> I didn't mute, but go ahead. Oh my god. Who muted? Are you gonna unmute brother? Wait, Zay must be talking like <laughs> This more you can land your take, bro. Ah, a, no, a, no, 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 no. A black man got mentioned. We don't need it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. But no, black that's man, all. Let him coach. That's the man. He was been saying this. Nigga is the worst fucking coach in the association. Every day that we go out there and play basketball, nigga, we are playing with a handicap. This nigga is actively sabotaging our fucking team. I don't understand it. Why niggas is giving this nigga bail for throwing out lineups of Kendrick Nunn, Lonnie Walker, Russell Westbrook, fucking that and, that. and Kendrick Nunn was at the four, by the way. You get what I'm saying? Like this nigga, Isaiah Thomas at the one. Like, bro, I, I never understood that shit. So I'm super happy to see this nigga gone. Um, like even now, it's like, I, I'm not trying to give none of these niggas bail because a lot of these niggas stunk it up in the fucking offs. But there's a part of me that's like, bro, like, I needed to see these last two years under a competent coach. I'm sorry. Like, this nigga was so fucking... Especially this year, man. Well, LeBron and AD is healthy and fucking performing at a high level, like, the way they are, like, the way they were this year. Like, to me, the way that we ended our season, like, I can't help but blame this nigga Darvin. Reason one, two, and three. over. Hey, you sound a little bit like Wally now. Get out there, McDonald's. Yeah, Vince Mo, you sound a little bit uh, robotic. Um, McDonald's Wi Fi, nigga. Yeah, you could, damn, nigga. could check your office Wi Fi a little bit and straighten up, but uh, it's back on you, bro. You just thought you play. My fault. That DSL truck. That DSL truck was late today. DSL truck was late. Uh, but look, um, no, nah, I remember this nigga Rome at some point came up and was like, look, we all here shitting on these niggas, but goddamn, we have the worst coach in the league. Like, the, the, the answer is right in front of us, and we just keep coming up with different fucking things to be mad about every fucking night. Like, that shit was true, and again, that's not to excuse the way that these niggas fucking folded in the office. A lot of these niggas put up fucking stinkers. A lot of these niggas are not blameless, but my fucking goodness, Darvin Ham, such a fucking shitty coach. I'm so glad that this nigga's gone. I don't really know who or think who uh, would probably be a best like replacement. I agree with the last speaker. Like, I just need a nigga that LeBron and hey nigga, where you at? Fix your bum ass Wi-Fi. Bro. 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 bro, god damn. You got Walmart. Yeah, this one you got Landry Tech, bro. Yeah, oh, Wi-Fi well, kind of. Nigga had a Starbucks somewhere. James said office Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah. Great moment. You gotta check. Huh? God damn. Hey, tell <laughs> IT to check their router. Hey, yeah. hold on, hold on. Yeah, you gotta, gotta get that code, break. bro. Hey, Go pay your phone bill, nigga. Hey, Austin, real shit. Shut up. Yeah, shut up. Yeah, shut up. Yeah, shut up. Yeah. And uh, um, 
Yeah, you're right. This space is cooked. Apparently, the Clippers, the Clippers are determined to sign Ty Lue to a long term extension. <laughs> <laughs> Ty Lue here to stay. It's over. Uh, so, so basically, basically, if Ty Lue, um, if the if Steve Ballmer pays Ty Lue, then like that shit is. This shit yeah, he is getting paid. And that nigga Steve Ballmer giving him a blank check. You know. Wait, so who? So who's the first one that uh, listed Talu as a possibility? I think it was Shams. Yeah. Oh, oh. should be Shams. No, but, but here's the I thing. Mean, though. It's, it's but here's the there. thing, though. Um, only the only thing I'll say, bro, the only glimmer of hope is if Talu just say, "Nigga, I don't want to be here." Like if he, no. I don't think that's a glimmer of hope. That's beyond a glimmer of hope. I don't think he's in it for the money. Like it's about situation for him. Because like. You feel yeah, what I'm saying? Because like Ty Lu, I'm just thinking about it. Would 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 Ty Lu rather coach that yeah. situation in 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 the Clippers? Like with Paul George probably gonna leave. Kawhi Leonard this nigga's gonna get hurt again at some point. You gotta pay yeah. James Harden. You probably are gonna lose in the first round. And I mean, the only real thing to look up to is the fact that y'all niggas got an owner that can write blank checks and you have a new Stadium soon, like I listen, bro. Ty Lu, that nigga. One of the reasons why he even went to the Clippers because the Lakers scorned him, and that might matter, right? He might yeah. be like, "Well, fuck, honestly, fuck the Lakers. Like, I'm just gonna stay where I'm at because y'all niggas didn't believe in me in the first place." But if there's any chance that may, may, maybe LeBron James can get involved, maybe you know Rob Pelinka could just fucking own up to him being a dumbass and Genie Bus, and both of them just say, "You know what? I'm sorry. We're sorry, bro." Like. We'll pay you what you're worth. Like, we'll, we'll give you the years you want. And, like, there's still a chance. I'm- Bro, think about what the Lakers would be right now if they had KCP, Caruso, and and, and yeah, I mean, uh, they, nothing. two years ago. They'd probably, be, they'd probably be great. But what I'm saying is I don't mm. think it's completely out of the realm for them to be able to right their wrongs in this situation. Cause just because Bombers – because you got to think about it. But Bombers seeing all this shit, too. So he's like, man, fuck that. I don't want the Lakers to get this nigga. So, like, we'll see. We'll see what happens, bro. I'm not going to be out on it yet until – Obviously, until he signs the extension. So, we'll see what happens, bro. And by the way, I watched KCP in 2021. So, <laughs> stop that gas. No, no, stop. I watched you, it. You, you, gotta, you really got to let go. I ain't going to let go. I watched it in 2021. So Everybody has it down there. Please stop. Uh, yeah, the stop. shit he doing now. He's doing right now. Right now. As a fan. As a fan. As a fan. As a, as a fan, I don't think uh, Ty would be motivated by the money no more, especially if he's going, like, next door to the team. So, it is situation. He's like a role player himself. <laughs> like Brother, players. say my name it is, correctly. Again, it, is, it is situational, and I do think we have a real shot if the Clippers flame out, which it's, it's our game seven tonight, to be honest. Like, I need the Mavs to close this shit out. Kawhi's not playing. So Ty Lu is will consider us even more and understand like if he signs a long term deal with the Clippers, the same shit he's been dealing with for a while, versus try to get LeBron his last ring and that kind of journey and maybe potentially you know uphold something younger with an Anthony Davis and a Trey Young leading a new basketball team. So I personally, I mean, I'm biased as fuck, but I think that's personally more exciting, a, a better venture. But um, can um, I ask y'all like you and Rome specifically a question? Like, are we sure Ty Lue wants to return after they disrespected him? In the first negotiation? Well, that's kind of what I was thinking. How long does that disrespect I mean, last? I don't know, bro. Like, like his I credentials are what they like, were. And now I mean, you want them all of a sudden? I don't say, know. Is that disrespect worth, like, you know... Yeah, like, I, you, another you, year? I, I, you I don't know. We'll see. Hey, you ever see that meme we'll see. of the uh, of the, dude, of the, of the guy, of the girl and the guy, the nerdy guy, he's trying to get out the girl, and then she's going for, the uh, like, the cool guy? And she's like, nigga, yeah. I don't want you. Yeah, we all saw and that. And then he's like, beat it, chick. It's kind of like that, bro. What was that for you, Twitter? It's kind of like that. But I, but I but I but I, I will say Rome. Sorry. I do think Rome with that. Never. I do think though with that if that if we don't know what happened, like they could have offered him five and then gave him three or whatever, like after the last minute. So it depends on how serious the flip was. Like if they I don't if they think flipped the out. disrespect was that real because it never got to a point where like. Well, I mean, but we yeah, don't we know. Don't know exactly. He might he might not we, feel we that. We don't necessarily way. know yeah. like how how scorn Tyloo felt about it or whatever the case is. So I mean we. Yeah, like I mean, I, it was reported they were trying to pick the nigga staff for him in no years. So yeah, I, I, was, I was dead. I was about to bring that shit up. Like they were disrespectful. As fuck. No, that's I mean, a fact. Wait, yeah, wait. Who said that? James, yeah, I did. Because I do, I do my research. Yeah, bro, that that was. <laughs> yeah, no, no. That everybody was around that at that point. But yeah, that's what I'm saying, bro. Like that was crazy. They tried to handicap 
handicap him like he was in the Bro, I don't, I don't like think Ty Lue We know, we know that Ty report Lue is true. Holding a grudge though. But like, listen, we know that report is yeah, true like because they did it with so Vogel. Like, they picked you know Vogel's man? assistants for him, so the whole assistant should not let him pick the niggas he want and lowball him in years. They're trying to match his contract with Braun years. James, I know. So I don't know. I don't, we'll don't necessarily give a fuck too much, but Patrick Beverly has been banned from future guest appearances on ESPN shows. <laughs> Yeah, that's serious. Yeah, she was nasty. Nigga, <laughs> bro, I'm not gonna lie. That was, that was some of the dumbest shit I've ever so seen. Uh, nigga Eli, threw the ball to, shit, bro. Nigga threw the ball to fan twice. Nigga, I thought he only did yeah, like, nigga, twice. Fine. I said, you got something to say, brother? What you got? What you got to say about Tyler? I'm not going to lie, bro. That nigga dead ass, bro. Like, as a nigga, like, I keep up with the, like, I be watching the Clippers a lot. Obviously, they play late night. They usually play, like, or, like, their games usually last, like, a little bit Yes, they're on the West Coast. Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, but look at you stuck in dick. Nigga, I'm not going to lie. All y'all critiques of, all y'all critiques of him that I hear, like, every, like, every space, like, these are the same critiques niggas be having of Ty Lue, right? When things go bad, just default to the same small ball lineups you've been using for five years. They run actions that niggas have been running for 25 fucking years. Like, like dead ass. Their, their, their half-court offense looks like what the fucking Bulls would look like in a more spaced-out era. So, very not super creative, not crazy defensive schemes. Like, niggas just want him because LeBron th- likes him. Like, he likes to play poker with him. Nigga, not a good coach. The, that's literally the point, nigga. That's but that's what I'm point. saying. Like, you just, that's bro, the point. Wait, no, 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 that's that's the point. Stop you. Stop you. You're telling me then you're literally doing niggas. Wait, 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 wait. LeBron is the yeah, that, Eli, well, Eli's Eli's right there. Allow me to finish. Right yeah. Allow me to finish. Niggas literally just said. Yeah, Eli Eli is correct niggas then. literally niggas literally just said, Ah, oh, damn, bro. I'm so tired of the Lakers policies, bro. Why do they keep fucking signing coaches that just have a connection with them? And then the coach that they want to sign, it doesn't have anything to do with on court product because the on court product for his entire for his entire Clippers tenure, or at least his recent Clippers tenure, has been poor. It has everything to do with the fact that if he comes to and Clippers fans feel that way too. Like, you hear me speak? If the nigga, if the Shut nigga up. comes, I'm trying to help you out. You know, I don't fuck you. Fuck if you. the nigga comes, to, <laughs> yeah, go back to your corner, if Kyrie. If the nigga comes to LeBron, if the nigga hey, comes mute up, to mute up, mute up, mute up. If the nigga comes to advice. LeBron, if the nigga comes to LeBron's house, if they're gonna have fun playing fucking fucking poker. Is what y'all niggas care about, or do y'all care about on the court product? Like, what the fuck? I and, care about a coach that fucking LeBron James I mean, Kawhi and there. What a out on at a certain stretch of the year because this shit happens, bro. If LeBron James don't have the nigga respect, I see it every fucking year. The nigga just doesn't give a fuck. He's not gonna listen to the nigga in the huddle. He's not gonna listen to the nigga's play calling. He's not gonna listen to this nigga's actual opinion on anything. When you have a coach that LeBron James is one with at a certain point. That has to matter. The whole reason why Darvin Ham, X's and O's, I'm wasn't the worst thing. He I'm wasn't keeping, awful. He wasn't that's, awful. But that's what fact, I'm saying. No, no bullshit. The fact, no bullshit, the fact no bullshit, no of the bullshit. matter is the nigga didn't have LeBron James' respect. I understand. And he understand. lost AD's respect. So you I, have to. Act, you can't just act like that isn't okay. at this point. Okay, that plays a... point in this era, is it more important than Rome. the... Rome, you, you, you sound kind of emotional about that. I'm trying to jump, bro. This ain't Alabama. That's, but nah, that's Eli, go ahead. I want a coach that's going to call... I, I want a coach that's going to call LeBron James for firing eight threes a game, too. Like, that's what I'm looking for, too. Listen, <laughs> okay. Here's, here's, what, here's what I am saying. LeBron likes him. LeBron has his respect. Okay, that's one aspect of coaching. Now, if you now you go down the line, all the... Uh, because that's not the only critique that you niggas made. Rotations have been an issue. They've been an issue with the Clippers. Offensive creativity. I would argue that Ham is a, a good like. Whether it comes to when it comes to switch beaters, drop beaters, I would argue Ham is dead ass a better offensive coach. You know, the product that the Clippers have put up put up the last few years, like no bullshit. So when it, so if your if your main talking point is a nigga likes you, okay, maybe the search should go beyond. This is our game seven. I'm praying that Ty Lu is on the table. Like, that's not a coach worth praying for, is all I'm saying. He's dead shit. And everything except for the one thing you said. Oh, he'll have the nigga respect. Oh, he'll fuck with the nigga. Okay, let's 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 look how much you niggas give a fuck about him having a nigga's respect in February if the offense is shitty. Cause niggas and, and obviously I'm not trying to critique LeBron. I 